Thank you for joining me today for a few moments in God's Word. Merry Christmas. And uh, I'm hoping that during this time of the year, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior and His coming to the earth, to save mankind will be the most memorable season you've ever had. That you will find uh, God's love, God's peace, a newfound joy, uh, richer and fuller than you've ever known it to be before. We want to look at Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And just taking a moment, what was the purpose of Jesus coming? Well, I feel like, number one, it was to express from our Heavenly Father His unwavering love for mankind. And secondly, the purpose was for Him to provide uh, salvation. And to experience that, there had to be forgiveness. There had to be a blood sacrifice. There had to be a blood covering. And there had to be a new birth. Uh, for if God just forgave us, he would have to continually to forgive us with no hope of any change in our conduct or choices. But in that, when Jesus came to the world, he came to provide a, a brand new beginning, uh, being born again. Uh, it, it offers the mind, the body, the soul, and the spirit to be uh, freshly started, have a new beginning, a new heart, new mind, and our soul is redeemed and cleansed, and we have now the righteousness of Christ uh, within us and the work of the Holy Spirit. But during this season, all over the world, it is a common uh, thread to mankind, for the most part, uh, that there is some form of celebration at Christmas time, and not everybody has the same focus or the same understanding, but it is uh, by and large a time that is looked at as hope, a time to express joy and happiness, a time to come together and celebrate and share, uh, if not gifts, just intimate time. Uh, with those that you love and care about. It is also a time to reach to those that do not have people who care for them and to provide for them a time of focus that others are looking to those that are without, that we would uh, be an example of God's love in reaching to those who do not have or who have lost everything that they've had and express to them uh, what we've received from the Lord through Jesus, our Savior, and what we've experienced from that relationship that brings to us hope and joy and the hope of a better future to come. Uh, this season expresses uh, a time of uh, being focused on others instead of us. Uh, looking beyond our need and looking beyond our uh, circumstance and finding someone to show the love of God to. Matthew uh, chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men uh, from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. So 
secondly, uh, we focused on the expressing of God, of his love toward mankind. But secondly, now we focus upon the gift that was given through the baby Jesus and uh, the uh, action of the wise men was to come to acknowledge and to give credence and uh, show a desire of acceptance of who Jesus was. Uh, his birth, even to this day, is associated with not just celebration and being together with loved ones and reaching to the lost, uh, but it is celebrated by the giving of gifts uh, in some form, and it is celebrated with worship, a time of focusing uh, not on the world. Uh, we re we're wrestling against the materialism of Christmas, uh, Christmas, but to really be more spiritual minded and more focused upon the reason for Christmas. The real reason for Christmas is not gifts, though they came bearing gifts, the wise men, but it is to worship the Lord, to acknowledge him, uh, to accept who he is and accept him into our hearts. Uh, it says that they came because they had been made aware that his star had appeared, wasn't there before, and they came to worship him. Uh, the wise men brought gifts and they did worship him. And I believe that one of the most significant parts of this year should be our focus of worship. Uh, more than the lights and the trimmings and the trees and all the wonderful things that are decorations and more than the purchasing and giving of gifts is to spend time embracing the presence of the Lord, not only in our heart and our mind, but in our soul. We need for God to really reach down and push out the darkness and the despair and the, the anxiousness of our life and make room for there to be a real wonderful relationship with Jesus, the Son of God, in our daily life and that we are more aware of him, that we take more intentional effort and time to love the Lord and to worship the Lord and to think about him and to be still in his presence and allow him to speak to us. Uh, I, I believe more than anything else uh, that we need, we need to be able to hear the voice of the Lord, to feel his presence and to feel the touch uh, that comes through his Holy Spirit. I believe that is utmost in importance this season. And I believe that if we do that, we will reap a great benefit and our relationship will uh, be enlarged and increased with the Lord, which is so important. Uh, people are still seeking hope. They're still trying to find real joy. The chorus says real joy, wonderful joy. And how do we get that? Let Jesus come into our hearts. And uh, sometimes we may not realize that the uh, issues of life, the struggles of life, the things that are happening uh, to us personally, in our bodies, in our emotions, our mind, to our families, to those we love and care about, things that are happening in our world uh, can fill us so full of things that are diminishing God and robbing us of his peace and stealing our joy, uh, that we need to be very intentional this uh, Christmas season to draw near to the Lord. James says, if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. And we can always use more of the Lord in our lives. Can't you say amen to that? Uh, the, the wise men sought him, brought gifts, and they came to worship him. And I believe st still today people are doing that. There is a great hunger for truth, for purity, for honesty. It is, uh, it is overwhelmed by the ungodliness and the carnality of the world that we're living in. 
the darkness is everywhere. But I believe that we need to look for the light of Jesus. Uh, as the wise men were made aware that there was a new star, and this star they followed till they found him, uh, I believe that we need to ask God to uh, relighten the spiritual value of things, not only in his word, but of who we are. Uh, before the world foundation was laid, God called each of us by our name, and he called us to be his children and to walk with him and to be a family. I believe that we need to refocus our intentions uh, to be the family of God, be the children, the sons and daughters of the Most High, and be able to experience the fellowship that comes from being the family of God. Uh, the Bible says at John 3, 16, that God so loved the world, the motivation was love. He so loved mankind that he gave. He was the first gift giver. And uh, what did he give? He gave his only begotten son. So the gift that we are to pursue and to have expectation from and for is the gift of Jesus, the Son of God. I believe that's still the best gift. It's still the most important thing that we could ever have and experience in our life is to have Jesus live in our soul, in our heart, and in our mind and be a part of all that we are and uh, our family. God so loved the world that he gave. Gift giving. It is important that we realize the value in that not only in giving, but in receiving. It's a time of connecting. It's a time of understanding what we mean to each other and how important that is to protect that and preserve it and to nurture it by reminding people that we love them, we care about them, and uh, that should help us refocus our efforts on not being offensive, not taking for granted, not being careless about what God has given us and provided, but being very intentional and, and pouring into one another's lives uh, things that will be uplifting, encouraging, and building up one another, not only in the spiritual sense and in our faith, but building up one another in who we are. Uh, we have a position with each other that needs to not only be protected but and preserved, but it needs to be uh, magnified and increased. And and uh, we need to be able to experience more benefit from that today than we ever had before. Uh, God gave out of love, and it wasn't just the baby and having a person. And maybe that's something that we need to look at this Christmas, that uh, we take so much for granted our loved ones and our family Oh, yeah, they were born at this year and at this date. We may even celebrate their birthdays. But what do we do in between special days? What do we do between each Christmas? What, what do we do at the passing of one year and the beginning of another? I believe the effort needs to be increased and focused on, uh, on a regular basis, that we are strengthening who we are and what we mean to each other uh, throughout the year. And I believe there's no better time to do that spiritually than here at the celebration of the Lord's birth. That we make the effort, be very intentional and even judicial, uh, regularly making the effort, not only to tell God and to show God how we love him and how we're thankful for him, but to... Uh, live a life that is a reflection of what we say we do, that we love the Lord, that we're thankful, but that we walk more closely to him. We give him more space in our day and more time, and uh, we have a intentional thought process in our mind and emotion in our heart toward the Lord that is increasing that it wasn't basically started at the point of salvation and being forgiven and being brought into the family of God, but we need to be growing and maturing, learning how to love God better and to show him 
more adequately and others who we are. We are sons and daughters of the Most High. How did that happen? The gift was given. Jesus, the celebration of Christmas. It teaches us so many valuable truths that if we will expound on that and develop that, we will be a richer people. Our family will be richer and fuller, and uh, there will be more benefit, and we, we sure can use that. Don't you agree with that today? That uh, we need to learn the principle. We, we only get according to what we give. And God teaches us in the New Testament that by what measure we give out, that is how we receive back. And we need to be full givers, rich givers. Uh, be very intentional to take the time to express and to show uh, our affection, our love, our, our devotion, uh, our concern. All those things are so critically important in the relationships with one another. And the purpose of God giving was to save the relationship that he had when he created man and sin interfered and the weakness of the flesh uh, caused a collapse in the relationship with God. God wanted to salvage that. And this Christmas season, we need to make extraordinary effort with one another and with our Heavenly Father to salvage our relationship and not just save it, but to develop it and grow it and make it be stronger than ever before. Uh, the prophet Isaiah, as we spoke early on in Isaiah 9, uh, clearly saw it. A child was born and a son was given. Uh, a relationship where the world and the flesh and Satan had separated Adam and Eve in the garden and alienated. They no longer walked in the cool of the day with the Lord. So God deposits within our lives as we receive Christ the love gift from our Father, then here is now a living member of our family that constantly reminds us of God's love, gives us a way to show our devotion and love for God in the way we treat his Son. Now that's a spiritual focus, but it is also an earthly focus. God did not give us each other. God did not give us children, family, parents, grandparents, kids, grandkids, great-grandkids. He does not allow that and cause that just so we have people, but so we have one another. So we are to be able to experience love and to show love and to grow love. That's really the critical part of this season that we not only receive love, but give love and we develop and grow love and see it mature and come to a fruition of what God intended it to be. And uh, the wise men, uh, uh, they were bringing gifts to the gift. Now think about that. The wise men brought gifts to the gift of God, who was Jesus, the baby in the manger, to worship him and to show their devotion and love and their interest in having not only knowledge, and awareness of that he was there, but they wanted to have a relationship with this new king. Clearly, Jesus is the focus. He was the focus of God's love as a given as a gift. He is the focus of the Christmas season still to this day, thousands of years later, and he is the focus for eternity. And that is that God has family and the hope of family, the future of family. He has a way to show himself and his love and a way to return what he has given, receive what he has given uh, as we love him and live for him and develop our relationship as the sons and daughters of God. Uh, the wise men said, where is he that was born king of the Jews? And um, he became the focus. And I would uh, admonish you to more than anything else in your day, and if you wake up at night, uh, more than anything else, let your focus be upon Jesus. The gift that was given, 
in the season that we celebrate as Christmas, the coming of Jesus, was God giving his love. The motivation and the gift was love. God so loved. And let that be the focus. Whatever you do, let it be out of love, not out of expectation, not out of need, but out of love. Let it be given because there is love in your heart and let it be expressed in such a way that the gift is not what is focused on, but how much you love that person and how much you care and that you are there to support them, not just to do something kind for them, but you're there to worship them. I think that is the most sacred part and most important part of Christmas is the worship, uh, the focus upon others, upon the Lord, upon our relationships, upon our relationship with God. And Colossians tells us that Jesus is the head. He is the giver. He is the gift. He is the one who... Uh, if we receive him and follow him, will give us the structure that we need, will give us the protection, will give us the provision, will give us the fulfillment of life. Uh, he is the focus. And uh, scripture says he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life that will never really get to know God or get to be God, be with God. Uh, or understand God unless we receive Christ, worship him, and give to him our heart, surrender our will, humble ourselves before God through Christ, and experience that love. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.11 uh, tells us that there is no other foundation. There's no other way to grow life. No other way to have family structure no other way to experience true love and devotion and concern than to have Jesus. He is the foundation that we build upon to have our relationship with God. And God used Christ to be the foundation for us, for us to be able to experience his love and his devotion. Philippians 2, 9 says, Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So think about that a moment. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him. God lifted him up and magnified him even before his own name. Now, Christ, when he came, he magnified the Father before him. But how important is it for us to during this season and throughout the whole year, to really magnify the Lord, worship the Lord, praise the Lord, love the Lord, tell the story, and to share the love of God, and to be the image of God, and be the light of God, as he has called us to be, to be the messenger of God. And uh, as he exalted him, you and I need to exalt the Lord this season. We need to make sure that our emphasis is upon the Lord of Christmas and not the gifts of Christmas. When the wise men came, they did bring gifts, but their main fold purpose was to worship the Lord. Take time to acknowledge, to love, to worship, to praise, and do it together with your friends and family. Do it in the house of God, but do it in your own house and invite the presence of the Holy Spirit and take time to be thankful and grateful this Christmas season. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Christ Jesus. So, uh, the seeking after truth, the seeking after knowledge, the seeking after even material things, uh, improving ourselves, uh, experience more of life and the fulfillment of all that God created us to be able to do, to enjoy, to be able to share. Uh, all those things are uh, poorly used, would be my expression, that 
we don't take advantage and really expound the gifts that God has given to us through Jesus. The knowledge, the wisdom, the power, the authority, uh, asking anything in the name of Jesus, believing, and you shall receive it. I mean, have we even begun to scratch the surface of being able to truly not only uh, receive from God, but to be able to use what God has given us to be able to give back to others and back to the Lord as a testimony of how thankful we are and grateful that God sent his son, that he expressed his love for us, and that he's still doing that to this very day. Psalm 40, verse 5, Many, O Lord my God, are the wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. That's why I say I think we've maybe just scratched the surface of what God is still willing to do, to give, to show to us how much he loves us. And the channel is Jesus. He is the way you can experience abundant life. He is the way you can experience abundant joy. He is the way that you can find abundant peace. He is the way that you can be a difference maker in the lives of those around you and in this world and in the future coming of the kingdom of God. If we look at Psalm 34, verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Be the light this season that leads people to Jesus. As the light led the wise men, he said, Jesus spoke to his disciples and to future disciples, now you are the light of the world. How shall men hear if they don't hear through you the message? If, they don't, if they're not going to see God, they're going to have to see him through you. And the psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. This Christmas season, find time to really spend with the Lord and worship him, uh, receive his love. I believe the gift is still being given. And then when you're together with your loved ones and friends and family in the house of the Lord, in the marketplace, in your own home, when you're together, let the love, the light, and Jesus be seen in you this season. Become a greater expression of what Christmas is about. And let the Lord flow through your life. Let his love, his peace, his joy flow through you. Even when things are difficult and things can get tense sometimes during the holidays. But if you focus on the Lord and you allow him to work through you, you could be the light in the darkness. You could be the joy in the time of difficulty and despair. You could be the direction giver and the channel for those around you to experience a full, rejoicing, joyful, exciting time this Christmas season. I pray that for you. And I pray that you will experience more of God than you ever have before. Have a merry, merry Christmas. May God bless you today and each day until we stand together before him. Amen.